Most car dealers tell you they stand behind what they sell. American Motors dealers let their customers tell you. I didn't believe it. This is the story of the AMC Gremlin. It's hard to find a car with more ignoble roots than the AMC Gremlin. It was named for the mythical creatures said to be responsible for crashing airplanes and breaking machinery. It was introduced to the public on April Fool's Day. And as for the styling, AMC design chief Dick Teague made his first sketch of the car on the back of a Northwest Orient Airlines barf bag. Despite all that, the Gremlin was arguably AMC's best car. It was inexpensive to develop, and its timing was perfect. This year, nine million of you Americans will buy a car, probably from one of the three big car companies, without even considering American Motors. Now that's a shame. Last April, we came out with a Gremlin, an American car that meant the economy imports head on. Nobody had ever done that before. The and Gremlin was part of an uncoordinated response to the onslaught of imports. Ford and GM were developing their first ever subcompact vehicles, the Pinto and the Vega. But AMC didn't have the cash. It had just acquired Kaiser Motors' money-losing Jeep division for $70 million. And it was deep into the development of the 1970 Hornet compact car. It was obvious that whatever they developed would need to be as cheap as possible. So cutting down the Hornet seemed to be the best option. Style was the best way to make the Gremlin stand out. Teague was realistic about the car's appearance. He understood that the Gremlin was not going to win any styling awards, and that the Gremlin at least had personality and character, and that it looked different. Mechanically, the Gremlin was just as ordinary as it was stylish. One of the most notable features was its complete lack of technical innovations. GM developed new materials, manufacturing processes, and vertical packing shipping methods for the Vega. Contrast that with the Hornet, which was thoroughly modern but used Rambler American chassis and driveline component. The Gremlin received the Hornet's hand-me-downs, including straight-six engines, drum brakes, and a three-speed manual transmission without a synchronized first gear. The Gremlin's one advantage was its super stiff body shell, which resulted into a rattle-free ride and was the result of more cost-cutting, as the Gremlin had no trunk lid. It was the most rugged car AMC ever built at the time. The back window was hinged on four-seat models, but on low-end Gremlins, which lacked a back seat, luggage had to come in through the doors. Even though buyers might have seen through Gremlin's cheaply constructed facade, its simple engineering may have given the Gremlin an edge. The Gremlin certainly was functional. For one thing, it was the first modern American car that was truly as small as the Beetle, being within a couple of inches of the VW in length and wheelbase. For comparison, the Ford Maverick was nearly two feet longer. It was several inches wider, which made it feel like a bigger car. Of course, the AMC Gremlin weighed more than the VW by 760 pounds, but it was a hell of a lot quicker, nearly as fuel efficient, and its American-sized 21-gallon gas tank took it significantly farther on Phillips. It even had a tighter turning circle than the Beetle. Deep. The cheapest 1970 Gremlin with the smaller of the two sixes, a three-speed column shift manual, no backseat, and no hatch lid, listed for $1,879, right in the same neighborhood as the Volkswagen. To put that in perspective, a bare-bones 1970 Chevrolet Nova started at $2,335, and the Vega would debut with a $2,090 price tag. The Gremlin was an immediate hit with buyers. The car was more powerful than the Beetle and other imports, and it felt more substantial. The simple machinery made it quite reliable by today's standards. People loved its dorky looks, enough to overlook its choppy ride, tiny back seat, and lack of luggage space. In 1971, AMC introduced the Gremlin X, which would become a trend later in the 1970s that we call the all-show, no-go performance package. The X package added fancy wheels, big tape stripes, and a jazzed-up interior, but no performance improvements over other Gremlins. AMC added a V8 option in 1972, and the denim upholstered Levi edition appeared in 1973. 1974 was Gremlin's best sales year. 
Today, the AMC Gremlin is idolized as a piece of the 1970s kitsch, just as the lava lamp was, and deservedly so.